All right, we'll go ahead and get started. So hello, everybody. Um, welcome to today's workshop and welcome to the libraries in general. So today's session is going to be called Nowhere to Go Secondary Sources. And so real quick, as Allison said, when some people were just entering the room, um, we just wanna let you guys know that the first 30 minutes of today's session is going to be recorded and uploaded onto the library's YouTube page. So if you do not wanna be in the recording, um, just don't unmute yourself or turn your camera on until we stop the recording for the Q&A portion at the end. Um, however, please feel free to ask any questions that you may have during the presentation in chat. We're going to keep an eye on them and we've got some tech support people here to keep an eye on them for us. So we will get to any questions that you put in the chat. And then also we're going to stay for 30 minutes after the presentation to allow for any questions. Um, so feel free to use that time uh, to maybe try out some of the things that we're gonna talk about in the workshop today, or um, just ask any questions, get any feedback. Uh, feel free to use that time in whatever way suits you best. If you have to you know, leave, that's fine too, whatever works for you, but we are here to help. So just some quick introductions. My name is Leah Valletta and I am the GTA in the library in the teaching and learning programs department. So um, we just do sessions like this and otherwise help students with their research. And I'm Allison Shepard. I use she, her pronouns and I'm an online learning librarian also at Hodges Library. All right, so just a quick breakdown of what we're gonna do. We're gonna start by talking about what a secondary source is exactly. And then we're gonna talk about uh, what a research guide is and how those are related to secondary sources. And then Allison's going to go ahead and explain a little bit more about databases, how to use them, and just generally how to access um, all of the many databases that you have available to you as students here. Okay, so before we get into how to find secondary sources, we figured we should probably start with just what a secondary source is. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this term before, uh, especially as it relates to primary sources. So we're just briefly going to cover what it means. So personally, I think it's sort of hard to know exactly what a secondary source is without knowing what a primary source is. So while a primary source is a direct record of an event, my example here, video footage of a protest, a secondary source is going to be an interpretation or an analysis of those direct records. For example, a documentary about the protest, for perhaps using that video footage. Um, so for most of your research, especially if you're just starting out, a secondary source is going to be an article from an academic journal or a book or a documentary. Um, the thing is that these terms are not set in stone. So the a source can be a different type of source depending on the context. So to use my example, if a researcher is studying documentaries about protests, then the documentary about protests in this example would not be a secondary source, it would be a primary source. Um, and I just wanna bring that up because I think it can be helpful for understanding that the context of the source does matter when determining if it's primary or secondary. I don't bring that up to add extra confusion. Um, I think it's safe to say that for most of your base level academic research, a secondary source is very generally going to be academic journal articles, books and documentaries, anything that is interpreting um, primary sources. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. All right, so now that we know what a prime, what, excuse me, what a secondary source is, we're going to go into how you can find them in our libraries. So we're gonna start out by mentioning research guides, which perhaps some of you have used before. Um, but if not, we just want to let you know that a research guide is a collection of resources. It's often going to be links to databases and other library materials that are selected by a librarian for use in research pertaining to a particular subject. Now, if this seems like a kind of vague definition, um, that's because research guides don't really look any one way. They're not really any one particular thing. Um, sometimes librarians will make a research guide for a particular course. We also sometimes call them libguides. I guess I should throw that in there. But um, sometimes they're made for a particular course, like our first year composition guide um, that we made for specifically that course. Grace is going to throw a link in the chat for that. Thank you, Grace. Um, but mostly research guides are curated by subject librarians. So 
each major or subject here at UTK is going to have a librarian who focuses on that subject. And often those librarians are the ones who will create guides to help with research in that particular subject. And just because a subject isn't your major or isn't like your particular area of study doesn't mean that the research guide isn't for you or won't be helpful for you. So if you're researching, for example, about the Spanish flu for your first year composition class, you might wanna check out a research guide that we put together for first year composition, the one that Grace just sent out. But you also might wanna look at the history research guide or perhaps like the health research guide or something like that to find more databases that might be useful for you there. Okay, so next I'm gonna just go over where you can find research guides on the library homepage. Um, and hopefully that will help us make sense of exactly what they are. So here we've got a screenshot of the library homepage and the link to the research guides is just under this research column here. Um, I'm pointing at it, but you can't see my finger. Um, and third down uh, in that column, you'll see the link called research guides. So if you click on that, that will lead you to this next page. Thank you, Allison. And um, you can see here, this is a screenshot, so you, you're not getting to see the complete list, but you can see that here, the research guides are being organized by subject and they've all um, got links to them down below. You can see that you can organize the research guides by whatever way is most useful for you when you're trying to find one. So if you, for whatever reason, want to search them by librarian who made the research guide, you can do that. You can research them by type of guide. I think that that's gonna be like, if it's a course guide or if it's an event guide, that type of thing, or you can research them by subject or you can look at all of them at once, which can be a little bit overwhelming, but you can. All right. And so here I'm just going to show you the first year composition guide. Um, so as you can see, there is a bunch of links on this guide. It kind of is going through the process of research over on the left. And then here we've got some databases that um, the first year composition librarians selected specifically for people in that class, which leads us perfectly into our next part where Allison is going to tell you what these databases even are. Once you've got the links and you found them in the research guides, what are they and how can you use them? So I'm gonna pass that off to Allison for our database part. Thanks Leah. Um, so you'll see on this list, there are some databases listed here that are recommended for first year composition students. And if you were to click on primary sources on the side over here as well, you would also see another list of databases there. Uh, before we jump into them, though, I think it's important to know what a database is. So really, a database is just an electronic collection of published works. Library databases can include articles from journals, magazines, newspapers. Uh, they can include videos, images, and other types of materials as well. Some databases will focus on specific disciplines. So if you go to a biology database, most of the articles you'll find there, you'll expect to be about biology. Uh, while some of them are more general and cover a lot of different areas. One thing I wanna to mention too is technically you could consider OneSearch to be a database because it's also a collection of items. Uh, but the way that it's different is it also includes things that would be in a library catalog. So any items that we have in person at UT libraries as well. Now it does have some database content like articles included in it too, but typically if you're looking for scholarly articles, we recommend looking at the databases instead of just OneSearch because they have a lot more information there uh, and not all of that's indexed in OneSearch. Now let's take a look at how to find databases at UT libraries. So I'm just on the library's homepage. This is a screenshot at lib.utk.edu. And if you look down near the bottom of the page under the find materials heading, you'll find the link for articles and databases. This is what the databases page looks like when it first comes up. So you'll see there are lots of different ways to view the databases. You can search for one by name if you already know the name of one that you want to use or one that a librarian recommended to you. You can also look at the most popular databases. Some of those are more general, uh, but some of them are specific to a different discipline. So we've got one that's called Business Source Complete that has more business focused materials, whereas Academic Search Complete is a pretty general database that can cover a lot of content. In the middle column, you'll see by subject. Uh, if you click on one of the subjects in this column, it's going to give you a list of databases best suited for a specific subject area. 
So if I was doing research on art, if I clicked on art here, it would give me a list of art databases. You're not going to find much in there for business or another topic, though. Now, if you're not sure where to get started, there's also a general topics getting started link in that by subject box. And that's going to give you a list of just one or two databases for each of these subjects that you can use. And it also has some recommendations for how to choose which database you want to use as well. Now, the by type column over on the side is more about the format of what you're looking for. So you can look for things that are audio. You can look at data sets, ebooks, government documents, newspapers. You'll also notice there's a link for primary sources in that list. And that's not really relevant to what we're doing today because we're looking at secondary sources. But if you have a project where you need to look at newspaper articles or diary entries or photographs, that's a really great place to start to look for primary sources. So I'm actually going to go ahead and exit out of this presentation and pull this up really quick, this database page. And we're going to take a look at one of our most popular databases, which is Academic Search Complete. So I'm going to select that under most popular databases over here on the left. I'll note that if you're off campus, you will have to sign in with your NetID and password to get access. That's just because of the way that the publisher has this set up. We do have to log in if we're not on campus. And if you've got two-factor set up, which I think most people do at this point, um, you may have to have your phone handy so you can log in. Now, when I've logged into Academic Search Complete, you'll notice this looks a lot different than OneSearch does. It's got the three search boxes at the top. It's got a list of different search options down here at the bottom. I know it might look scary at first, but it's really pretty simple to use. So you can basically use it the same way that you do Google and OneSearch. Um, there are just a few things to keep in mind. So let's say I want to search for the topic of stress management for college students, because I think that's really relevant to this year. I'm going to enter college students in this first box here, and I can use one box or I can use multiple to do my searching. The way that I use multiple search boxes is to kind of separate out my search terms. So it's a little bit easier to switch things in and out if I want to change my search. So in the first box, I put college students. You'll see that it gives me some recommendations for other things I can fill in. So I could also pull in some synonyms. So college students or university students or undergraduates. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then in the next field, I'll leave this as and, so it's searching for both of these terms together in any articles or materials that show up. And I'm going to add stress management. And you'll see that it gives me a lot of different options here as well. This time I'll just do the one and see what comes up. So I'll click search. Depending on how fast your internet is, it might take just a moment to load this. But when it comes up, I've got about 600 results which isn't too bad, um, but I don't want to look at that many items to decide on which article I want to use. The first thing I usually recommend you do is instead of sorting your results by date newest over here on the side, choose relevance first. That way you're getting the most relevant results at the top, and you'll see when it refreshes from updating that, the keywords that we put in up here, college students, stress management, are highlighted in a lot more places in bold in the titles for these. Now, if you look over on the left, there's a list of filters that you can use to make this number of results that you're seeing smaller as well. You'll notice if you look at source types, this is the types of sources that show up in this list. So there are academic journal articles, there are articles from magazines and trade publications, and there are also book reviews. Now, if I needed to, for a class, just look at academic journal articles, I could check there. But if I need them to be articles that are peer reviewed, which is a process that articles go through before they're published, basically making sure that other experts in the field agree with the data and how it's presented, I can check this scholarly peer reviewed journals box up here at the top to get rid of anything that's not peer reviewed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And once that updates, that took away a few of our results, so we don't have to look at so many things. Um, there are a lot of limiters or filters over here on the site that you can use. One more that I use pretty frequently is this publication date filter. And if you look at this, you can see that these articles are going back to 1983. Colleges have changed quite a bit since the 80s, and stress management advice probably has as well. So I'm actually going to go ahead and change this to the last 10 years. Um, frequently in classes, I've seen professors say you need articles published in the last 10 or 5 years, and this is just a really easy way to find that. So we'll put 2011 in the first box, and when we click, it will go ahead and update that for us. 
So that got rid of quite a few. Now, if I wanted to take a look at any of these articles, the only thing I would need to do is either click on the title to go to the information page or find the link for the PDF under each. So let's say I want to look at some more information about this first article. I'm going to click on that. The information page that comes up has some really helpful information for you to see whether this article is actually useful to you or not. So if you look at these subject terms right here, if it doesn't have anything to do with the topic that you're interested in, this probably isn't the article for you. But I can see that it's tagged with stress management, undergraduates, and college students. So this might be something that's useful for me. I'm not sure yet. You can also take a look at the abstract down here, which is really just a shortened version of what the article is about. Now, if you're going to cite the article, you do actually need to read it. You can't just cite it based on the abstract. Uh, but this is a good place to start and look before you even download the PDF to see if this is something that's going to be useful to you or not. Now, let's say that I do want to use this article. I can get the PDF just by clicking the link over here on the side, and it's going to load in my browser, which then I can either download using the little link over here, um, or over on this side, there's usually a download link as well or I can print it or email it to myself or save it to Google Drive, really however you want to keep track of it, you can. So it's really easy to get access to a PDF. Occasionally, though, you'll be in the results list and you'll see something that you're like, oh, that's perfect, but it won't have the PDF link. So I'm going to find an example for that really quick here, just to show you how that looks a little bit different. Okay. And this looks like an interesting article, but you'll notice there's no PDF link down here. There's just this fine text. What this means is this article is not housed in this database, meaning we can't get the PDF from here, but we might have access to it somewhere else. So to get access, I'll click find text. It might take it just a minute to load because it's linking up to OneSearch and seeing if we have this anywhere else. And this actually gives me a download PDF link directly on this page. So if I click this, it might take it just a moment to load, but then I've got access to this article. So that was pretty easy and straightforward. Sometimes it won't be that simple, but if you ever have any questions, if you take a look in your search results here, there is also a link to the UT Libraries chat over here on the side. So if you're searching and you find something, but you can't get access to it, do reach out to us and we're happy to help you with that. I'll also note too, whenever you're in one of these database pages or in any of our research guides, there will typically be a link for getting help on these pages as well. So you'll notice on this agriculture page, there's a chat with us link right here. Also on the library's homepage, there's also this chat with us link. It's just up here on the side. So if you ever have any questions, don't worry. It's totally okay to reach out to us and ask for help. Uh, we do a lot of searching with students and we're happy to search with you no matter where you're at in the process. Um, it could be you're looking for keywords to search and you're not really sure where to start um, or you don't know what database that you want to look in for this item that you're looking for um, or you've been searching and you found something but you can't really get access to it we can help with any of those things let me pull this up again so we just did an example search but again just remember research is a process it may take you a few tries to find what you need you can't break the databases or one search. Um, so try searches in a lot of different ways and see what happens. And as always, if you need help, do contact us. Um, there are lots of different ways to contact us, but the easiest right now is to use our chat on the library's website, lib.utk.edu. Thank you all. We will go ahead and stop the recording so we can take your questions at this time. And I will go ahead and mute myself.